Greetings and welcome. Well, you may think that you've uh, seen all the nooks and crannies in the church. Uh, I guarantee you I have a few uh, places you haven't seen. Today we're at the base of the, uh, of the cross, which is still pretty high up. And so we're almost at the peak of the church here, uh, overlooking the, uh, the view of the bay. Um, great day, glorious day. Uh, good day to be out outside and enjoy nature. Wind's blowing. If you can see the the, uh, the camera's blowing a little bit here. So we uh, we thought we had this. Uh, I don't want to say under control, but uh, we thought we had a good thing going, and we were moving inside and had all the uh, compliances and all the uh, well. We thought we had everything uh, covered. And so then uh, you get a word from the governor and from the mayor and all that kind of stuff. So indoor worship has been suspended for a while. Who knows how long? So we're going to have a couple online services and then the, uh, um, we have two dates in uh, August, August 2nd, August 16th. We'll be meeting out in the front lawn. And so that'll be fun. We'll have two outdoor services at least. Maybe doing outdoor services for a while, but we don't know yet. So. But that'll be fun to do in uh, August to have a couple outdoor services and uh, have Holy Communion out there. Um, we do have limited seating, so I suggest you uh, RSVP to the office if you uh, want to come. You may not be able to come to both services, uh, but state what you, your preference is, and we'll try to accommodate that the best we can. We have to keep the numbers down for uh, social distancing and all of the above, usual stuff, everything. So. So it's a beautiful day in the neighborhood, and uh, we're uh, glad that you could uh, be with us this, uh, this week. Have a great message, uh, some interesting things that uh, guarantee that uh, you may not have uh, totally gone into the depth, maybe just skim the surface on a couple of these things. And so uh, take a look at that. And uh, my next, next task is to get down from here. <laughs> so. Uh, so thanks for joining us, and we will turn this over to uh, our organist, Larry, and then uh, hear a great children's sermon from Tracy, and uh, carry on with this week's message. So be blessed in the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Welcome to Resurrection in Redondo Beach. Hey guys, welcome to the children's message. So in today's Bible story, Jesus tells another story about a farmer and planting, but this time he focuses on the weeds. And weeds are kind of tricky because you can't always tell them apart from the good flowers or plants that are around them. So here's an example that I have for you 
I have two pictures and in both pictures you see yellow flowers, right? So I have a question for you. Which one do you think shows weeds? Is it the picture on the left or is it this picture on the right? Which one do you think is a weed? Okay, well, if you guessed this picture on the right, you're right, these are the weeds. These are the ones that are flowers, but from far away, they look very similar, don't they? So as the story goes today, there was a farmer who was ready to sow seeds in his field. And if you remember last week, we talked about what the word sow means. It means to plant. So he was ready to plant wheat and his workers and he planted all the wheat. And then that night they went to sleep. And while they were asleep, an enemy came and planted weeds, seeds into the field as well. So it was a long time before they realized, but when the crop grew, they not only grew weeds, I'm sorry, wheat, but they grew weeds as well. And so the workers went to the farmer and they said, what happened to our field? We planted good seeds. And the farmer knew immediately. He said, my enemy has come and put weeds in my field. And they said, well, let's go out and pick out all the weeds so your crops can grow. And he said, no, if you do that, you might accidentally pick some of the wheat and ruin the field as well. Let's wait until it's all grown and then we'll handle the problem. So they waited and waited until the wheat was ready to be harvested. And then all the workers went out and they picked and they picked. And then anything that was a weed, the farmer said to bind and burn it because it wasn't useful. And then the wheat was bound and brought to the farmer and put into the barn. So this story makes sense because we know a lot about planting, but it's really talking about the people here on earth that God put here. And when we see the field, this is our planet. This is the planet earth and the farmer is God. And God intentionally put people on this earth to worship him and be close to him. And he wants our hearts to believe in Jesus. But just as an enemy came and put weeds into the field, Satan also has people here on earth who are not good and they do not believe in God and they do not accept Jesus as their Lord, Savior and Christ. And unfortunately, the way it goes for us is that we are all together on this earth. And God gives us a choice. He wants us all to turn to him. But there will be some, the Bible says, there will be some people who do not turn to God. Now, you can't tell who those people are who are bad or don't believe in Jesus and who are good and have accepted Jesus Christ into their heart. Just as these weeds and flowers were hard to tell apart, this story tells us that we cannot tell them apart. Only God can tell these people apart. And someday when Jesus comes back to us, it says in the Bible that on that day, God will decide who is going to come in and be with him in his kingdom of heaven and who will not. And that's why it's so important to bring Jesus into your heart all the time, because when you do that, you're drawing closer to God and you have a relationship with him. And that's what we want. And Jesus even tells us that the people who have not accepted him, those are the people we need to pray for. We don't cast judgment ourselves. That's not for us to do. Eventually he will take the weeds or the bad people and make sure they go where they belong. But for now, it's our job to pray for everybody that they turn their attention and their hearts and their minds towards God and want to bring Jesus into their hearts, okay? So tonight, when you go to bed, try something. Do our five finger prayer that we talked about where you pray for others and then you pray for yourself. And then right when you're done praying for yourself, pray for the people who don't know Jesus or God yet or have turned their backs on Jesus and God and don't want to be a part of our Christian kingdom because there is still time. We are still on this earth and God's giving us a chance and he's using us 
to help gather everybody into his kingdom. So say a little prayer that everybody on this planet would turn their eyes to God and pull Jesus into their hearts, just like you have. All right. Have a great week and thank you for your prayers. Thanks, Larry and Tracy. A little bit dusty up there. So uh, God has made us his people in its most interesting way that you can think of. Not by some type of an exam, not by memory verses, not by our understanding of the scriptures, not by being born into a certain class or race or gender of people, but simply by swimming, by putting us in this baptismal pool and allowing us to be born again through the water and through his spirit because of the promise that he made through our Savior Jesus Christ. So let's take a moment and reflect upon the, the week that we've had to uh, consider the things we've done and to consider the things that we've left undone. Most merciful God, we confess that we are captives of sin and cannot free ourselves. We have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves for the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ. Have mercy on us, forgive us, renew us, and lead us so that we may delight in your will and walk in the ways of your holy name through our Savior, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. The, uh, the hymn for today, the first hymn is 462. You can follow along if you have a bulletin or simply hum this one. Sing to the top of your lungs. Sing to your neighbors. We don't care. Now we join in celebration.
Alleluia. Christ is risen, Christ is risen indeed. Alleluia. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Amen. The Lord be with you. Let us pray. Faithful God, merciful judge, you care for your children with firmness and compassion. By your spirit, nurture us who live in your kingdom, that we may be rooted in the way of your Son, Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. We're going to skip to our gospel reading today. Alleluia, Lord, to whom shall we go? You have the words of eternal life. Alleluia. The Holy Gospel according to Matthew, the 13th chapter. Glory to you, O Lord. Jesus tells another parable in Matthew 13. Jesus put before the crowds this saying, the kingdom of heaven may be compared to someone who sowed good seed in the field, but while everyone was asleep, an enemy came and sowed weeds among the wheat and then went away. So the plant came up and bore grain and the weeds appeared as well. And the slaves of the householder came and said, Have master, did you not sow good seed in your field? Where did these weeds come from? And he answered, An enemy has done this. The slave said to him, Then what is, do you want us to do? Go and gather them. But he replied, no, for in gathering the weeds, you will uproot the wheat along with them. Let both of them grow together until the harvest, and at harvest time, I'll tell the reapers, collect the weeds first, bind them in bundles to be burned, but gather the wheat into my barn. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. Turn it over to John Brown. It's an everlasting sign. As the rain and the snow come down from heaven to not return without water in the earth making it bud and flourish so the words that come out from my mouth will not return to me but accomplish my desire and achieve my purpose my thoughts are not your thoughts My ways are not your ways, declares the Lord. So go out in joy and be led forth in peace. Thorns will be replaced by the pines. And instead of briars, the laurel will grow for an everlasting. For as far as the heavens are above the earth, so my ways and thoughts are above the earth. are not your thoughts my ways are not your ways declares the Lord so go out in joy and be led forth in peace thorns will be replaced by the pine and instead of briars the So go out in joy and be led forth in peace. Thorns will be replaced by the pine and instead.
instead of briars, the laurel will grow for an everlasting sign. For an everlasting sign of my everlasting. Everlasting name, grace, peace, and mercy from God the Father, of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Amen. Perhaps the best way, a way, to look at this current situation that we find ourselves in is to maybe classify it as a wilderness experience. A wilderness experience. The Wilderness Act of 1964 declares the wilderness to be a place that's inhabitable by human beings, but not a place where they would permanently reside. That's kind of where we're at right now, isn't it? We're in a place that's certainly inhabitable, but it's in a place where we're desiring to pass through, to get on the other side of, which is how we might explain the children of Israel walking through the the desert in 40 years, or maybe Noah being on the boat many days with all the animals as a place it was passing through. And perhaps that's a, a comforting way we can look at a situation. It'll be different six months from now, a year from now. What that will be, we don't know, but it will be different. It won't be the same. There's a story in the Old Testament about Jacob. An important story. It goes back into the 28th chapter of Genesis. And Jacob was sleeping, actually. He was having a dream. And it says that uh, Jesus, he used this stone for a pillow. He was out in the wilderness because he was a rugged guy used to camping. He propped up a stone, laid in the outdoors, probably falling asleep by starlight. Placed a little bit north. Six miles, six miles north of Jerusalem, a place called Luz, L-U-Z. Fell asleep. And he had this interesting dream. It says, as he dreamed, behold, a ladder set up from the earth, and the top of it reached to heaven. And behold, angels of God were ascending and descending on this ladder. Now that's a little bit strange, because wouldn't you imagine the angels descending from heaven and then ascending? But that's not the way it was written. It says they were on earth, going up the ladder, ascending, and then descending. So all you folks who love angels, this is, this is your story right here. Because what it suggests is they're with us. They're with us. Here and now. Among us. And so he awoke. And says Jacob awoke from his sleep. He said to himself, I'm in this little campground here called Luz, surely the Lord must be in this place. Surely the Lord must be in this place. And so he says he arose early in the morning and took the stone that he had used for a pillow and set it up and poured oil on top of it. Poured oil on top of this pillow. That's kind of interesting, right? So he anoints 
his pillow, this rock, with oil, and renames the place to Bethel, calls it the house of God. From now on, this is the place, this is called the house of God. I've seen it. I've seen in my dream angels ascending and descending. And this is the house of God. It says that Jacob vowed a vow saying, if God will be with me and will keep me in this way that I go and will give me bread to eat and clothes to put on so that I come again to my father's house in peace, then this Lord will be my God. And this stone which I have set for a pillar shall be God's house. And all that you give me, I will give back a tenth to you. What an amazing time, an amazing place in the wilderness for Jacob. He slowed down enough to notice what God was doing. When we think about the wilderness, we've been through the wilderness probably at some time in our lives, perhaps driving, perhaps you're on an open road, driving to the desert, up north, some different places, going 60, 70 miles an hour maybe, flying through the wilderness, a mile a minute, even more. So you look out, but you're passing through it very quickly. And that's one way to get through the wilderness, is to pass through it very quickly. The other way is Jacob's way. Stop, take a nap, and sleep in the wilderness, and notice what God is doing. And sometimes that's an uncomfortable place to be, isn't it? To have to stop and be patient and wait to see what God's doing. That puts us in a similar place in the story that we read a few minutes ago about the, the wheat in the weeds, where the manager is talking to his employees, the workers, saying, leave the weeds, be patient. Let everything grow up together. Don't worry about pulling the weeds right now. Not necessary. Just keep watering everything. Keep doing what you're doing. Keep doing what you're you're supposed to do. And it will all come up together. And at that time, then we'll separate the weeds first from the wheat. Be patient and just wait. Similar to what it seems God is calling us to do right now in the midst of everyday life, in the midst of the weeds that grow up that we see, the uncomfortableness, God calls us to be patient and to wait. Maybe take a nap and notice the angels ascending and descending in our own lives. So one more thing. It says that Jacob takes the oil I have some oil here that I brought back from the Holy Land. It's rather expensive. It says it's a joint product between the Israelis and the Palestinians. Extra virgin olive oil. Very expensive oil. And this is the oil that we use when we baptize babies, when we pray for healing for someone, when we give someone Godspeed, confirmation, different types of celebration is this expensive oil we use. And in Greek it's called pistos. Pistos, with a P, a letter P. The anointing oil. And we think back, get your mind spinning a little bit, and what did Peter say to Jesus when Jesus said, Peter, who do you say that I am? And Peter says, you are the Christ, the anointed one, the son of the living God. And Christ means Christos, which is another name for oil, the anointed one. Peter's saying, Jesus, you are the anointed one. You're the Christos. But the interesting part is there's two types of oil. 
There's the rather expensive oil that we would use for on the top of your salad, perhaps, or in some fancy dressing. But then there's the everyday oil, the kind of cooking oil that is not so expensive, rather common, ordinary. And that oil is called the Christos, the common oil, the cheap oil, the everyday oil. And so Peter calls Jesus the cheap oil, the everyday oil, the common oil. He doesn't say, you're the expensive oil. He says, you're, you're the common oil. You're the oil that everyone can buy, that everyone uses on a daily basis. That's who you are. Jesus says, you got that right. I'm for the everyday person. I'm not the expensive oil. Jesus is the anointing in our lives, but not the anointing that's only made for a select few, a very wealthy group. Jesus is the oil for everyone and makes that available to us. Isn't that fascinating? A couple letters difference. It tells us who Jesus is. There's one little part that we skipped over here that Jacob was talking about. After he got done dreaming, after he got done seeing the angels going up and down the ladder in his dream, after he said, this place is, belongs to God, he said one more thing. Out of Genesis 28, he says, how awesome is this place. This place is none other than the house of God, and this is the gate of heaven. That's our memory verse for the year. How awesome is this place, Jacob says. This is none other than the house of God, and this is the gate of heaven. That's what God has done for us. He brings us out of the wilderness into his house. Brings us out of this area of confusion and maybe chaos and uncertainty, but he brings us into his house where there is safety and purpose and guidance and his love and his grace for us all. So we welcome God into this place in our lives into this wilderness perhaps we're going through right now, this time of uncertainty, knowing that God will lead us through as he has led his other children through in the past, hasn't forgotten us. So let's be hopeful, let's be full of joy. Let's be aware of this oiliness of Christ, that his anointing becomes our salvation. And that, my friends, for today, is good news. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Let us say together the words of the Apostles' Creed, expressing our faith in our Lord and Savior. I believe in God the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth, I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. On the third day he rose again, he ascended into heaven. And he is seated at the right hand of God the Father and will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. One more hymn, Let All Mortal Flesh Keep Silent.
Let us bring our prayers before God. Gracious God, confident in your care and helped by the Holy Spirit, we pray for the church, the world, and all that are in need. God of the harvest, you sow the good seed of the gospel of Jesus Christ into your field. Help your church throughout the world to be both diligent and patient, full of resolve and gentleness, that our witness may be fulfilled to your intentions. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. God of all space and time, your whole creation groans in labor pains, awaiting the gift of new birth. Renew the earth, the sky, the sea, so that all of your creation experiences freedom from the bondage of decay. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. God of all nations, teach us your ways that we may walk in your truth. Mend the fabric of the human family, now torn apart by our fearful and warring ways. Guide us by your mercy, your grace, your steadfast love. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. God of hope, you accompany those who suffer and are near to the brokenhearted. Open our hearts to your children who are lonely and abandoned, who feel trapped by despair. We pray for all who suffer in different ways, especially for Jane, for Megan, for the Klebe family, for Lexi, for Mary, for Lynn, for Robbie, for Duane, for Diane, for Mac, Tomasello family, for Pam, for Mike, for Reuben, for Marcia, for George, for Donna, for Michael, for Bill, for Carol, and others that weigh heavy on our hearts. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. God of the season in the midst of summer, give us refreshment, renewal, and new opportunities. We pray for the safety of those who travel. We pray for those who cannot take rest as they need it. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. For the fellowship gathered in this place, in all different ways, in all different experiences, for the spiritual gifts of each of our members, for those celebrating significant events in their lives, especially for Lauren, Signe, and others having important occasions in their lives, that the Holy Spirit would guide them in their work and their journeys. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. In the certain hope that nothing can separate us from your love, we offer these prayers to you, O Christ our Lord. Receive them in gladness. Amen. The peace of Christ be with you always. Let's take a moment to signal to one another, embrace one another, share the peace of Christ. Amen. We receive our offerings through simply giving, through the mail, in different ways. And so thank you for your uh, generosity and your faithfulness. God of all goodness and growth, all creation is yours, and your faithfulness is as firm as the heaven. Water and word, wine and bread are the signs of your abundant grace. Nourish us through these gifts that we might proclaim your steadfast love in our communities and in our world, through Jesus Christ, our strength and our song. Amen. And now gathered with Christians all around the land in different places, let us unite our hearts and hold each other's hands in a spiritual sense as we say the prayer that Jesus taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be your name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. Forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. 
Now receive this blessing as we go on and begin a new week. May the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord cause his face to shine upon you and be gracious unto you. May the Lord look upon you with favor and give you his perfect peace. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Water you turned into wine Open the eyes of the blind There's no one like you None like you Into the darkness you shine Out of the ashes we rise There's no one like you None like you Our God is greater Our God is stronger God you are higher than any other Our God is healer Awesome in power Our God Our God Into the darkness you shine Out of the ashes we rise There's no one like you None like you Our God is greater Our God is stronger God you are higher than any other Our God is healer Awesome in power, our God, our God. Our God is greater, our God is stronger. God, you are higher than any other. Our God is healer, awesome in power, our God, our God. God is for us, then who could ever stop us? And if for God is with us, then what could stand against? And if for God is for us, then who could ever stop us? And if for God is with us, then what could stand against? What could stand against? God is stronger, God you are higher than any other, our God is healer, awesome in power, our God, our God, and our God is greater, our God is stronger, God you are higher than any other, our God is healer, awesome in power, our God. And if for God is for us, then who could ever stop us? And if for God is with us, then what could stand against? And if for God is for us, then who could ever stop us? And if for God is with us, then what could stand against? stand against so let us conclude our conclude our meeting today from our memory verse found in Genesis 28 17th verse how awesome is this place says Jacob 
This is none other than the house of God, and this is the gate of heaven. Go in peace. Christ is with you. Thanks be to God. Let us serve him with our hearts. We will see you next week, and in two weeks, we will have our first uh, outdoor service. Please join us. Please RSVP. One of the two dates, August 2nd or August 16th. Be blessed, brothers and sisters. You belong to God. Amen.